السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المكرمين المعظمين ما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله يحب التوابين ويحب المتطهرين صدق الله العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of all the worlds we send peace salutations blessings upon his most beloved nabi prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam we send blessings upon his entire household his ahli bayt atahar we send blessings upon his all the companions and we send blessings upon every single one who have died in the state of iman we make dua may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of his goodness in this dunya we make dua may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us health and iman and we make dua may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us iman maghfirah jannah in here after ameen ya rabbal alamin my beloved nabi prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam beloved followers today's topic is very very important and especially it is important to our youngsters that's why i texted in the morning about today's topic so those who want to you know get benefits of it they can come a little early and alhamdulillah alhamdulillah uh when i texted to the community i got good response parents actually told me this is very important topic and glad you told us uh, uh, you know earlier inshallah rahman that is why it is being recorded and inshallah rahman will be posted on my youtube channel too so if you have missed it you can inshallah rahman sit along with your family and you can do listen to it today's topic is lack of precaution during usage of restroom you know uh having less precaution uh from urine drops when you are using restroom alhamdulillah to look at the bright side of the picture is that majority of the adult people we are immigrants we came from india pakistan bangladesh uh, egypt dubai or somewhere you know arab countries so alhamdulillah we were taught and alhamdulillah that's why we do take care of this very very you know nicely but the darker side of the picture is the youngsters those who were born and raised over here they actually do not take this thing seriously forget about the restrooms of you know house or somewhere else even the restroom in the masjid if you go you will see what actually our youth our youngsters they do they actually do not use you know tissue paper they do not even you know bother to sit down and have their you know uh, urination uh, process prob- uh, you know with peace and completely they do not do it that is why inshallah rahman today we will talk about the importance of it and today we will talk about that how islam is so curious about it and why it is so the first thing i've recited a beautiful ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna allah yuhibbu tawwabina وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who make tawbah, who do repentance, who comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after committing any major mistake, any shortcoming, any major sin. وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are very, very keen to do cleanliness, purification of their clothes, their body, and you know every single thing which is actually we have to go through 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those. In another portion, I would say, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he came to guide us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to guide us. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started his preaching, it was in three different process. The first one, in three different phases. The first one was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told very little amount of the people and he actually gathered and he told them. So that was the, his first phase of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, tabligh and uh, preaching of Islam. The second phase, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked, will call, uh, you know, collectively your relatives, especially your friends, relative people, those you know. وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Please do call and uh, preach Islam amongst your close friends and amongst your relatives. And the last one was very, very common to everyone. The thing which was very common, what was the word? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, kum fa'anzir wa rabbaka fa'kabbir wa thiyabaka fa'tahir. Four ahkamat, do's. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O beloved Nabi Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you do get up for anzir and you do preach Islam. You do let people know about the right and wrong. You do let them know about the uh, surat al-mustaqim, about the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the oneness, tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the importance of this book of hidayah, book of guidance, Quran. With and وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ And always do takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always, you know, glorify your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way. And this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. He came and he spoke about oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He called the people towards rabubiyat, towards wahdaniyat, towards oneness, towards tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why people actually got angry and they were not happy and pleased with him. Why? Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was talking bad about their idols. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was calling people towards Islam, towards oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fourth commandment, look at the beautiful ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَثِيَابَكَ فَتَحِّرْ Make sure that you do clean, you do, uh, you know, purify, make sure that you do clean your, uh, your clothes, your body, and you know, every single thing will actually be good. Make sure you do that. وَثِيَابَكَ Clothes. Alhamdulillah, when we do offer our daily prayers, we have to make sure that we do, we are tahir. We are pure, we have wudu, we have ghusl, our clothes are clean, our place are clean, that we have to make sure. These are amongst the shara'it of Islam, shara'it of salah, conditions of salah, if you want to begin your salah. One of the most basic things, taharat. If somebody asks you, how many shara'it conditions of salah are there, what do you answer? Six. Taharat, satri awrat, istiqbal, qibla, waqt, niyyat, takbir, tahrima. So what is the first one? Taharat. And Islam talks about it, taharat. Islam loves those who are actually tahir, those who are nazif. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, with the difference of the word in the narration, an nazafatu or at taharatu satrul iman. Being clean is actually part of iman. Cleanliness is part of iman. And some narrations say, nisful iman, half of the iman. This is our duty. That we are clean, alhamdulillah, we do, we do make sure. Especially adult I'm seeing, they always take care of this. When they come, alhamdulillah, they are completely well dressed. They are actually, you know, have some perfume on them, alhamdulillah. They have tobi, they are completely, you know, with wudu, every single thing. But our youngsters, youth, those who go to public school, those who use public restroom, they are not very keen into that. They actually, you know, stand, they urinate, and no matter how, you know, the urine drops are coming, they do not even care. Their clothes are being sometimes, you know, wet. Their body sometimes get wet. When they get home, they do nothing to change the clothes, sometimes not even that. Sometimes not even that. And that's why sometimes they come and they offer their prayer, prayers. Now tell me, is these kind of prayers are going to be accepted? No. The first one, first thing is missing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ Whenever you get ready for salah, what you have to do? فَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ مِنَ الْمَرَافِقُ وَمْسَحُوا بِرُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ مِنَ الْكَعْبَيْنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the importance of doing, uh, you know, performing wudu. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word very, very, you know, uh, the, this word is actually called 
hard word fattahru murtaki you know more the enforcing no matter what situation you are going through make sure you are clean and you get the cleanliness may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq that we do so inshallah rahman this is the beauty of our religion beauty of islam beauty of teaching of our rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam islam never ever leaves us alone each and every moment of our life we do get guidance from allah we do get guidance from quran we do get guidance from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how to walk quran will leave you like that will not quran say wala tamshi fil ardi marha do not walk with attitude how to talk wala tusair khaddaka lin nasi do not talk with people while you know making your face wa qulu lin nasi husna always speak you know wisely always speak, speak politely and you know how to deal with people wa abudullah wa la tushiku bi shay'in wa bil walidayn ihsana wa bi dhul qurba wal yatama wal masakin wal jari dhul qurba wal jari al junubi wa sahibi bil jambi wa ibn sabil wa ma malakat aymanuk always be respectful for people that's how you should deal people how to work on our personality look at the uh, entire surah hujurat alhamdulillah talks about your personality do not you know whatever message you get from somewhere do not actually publish it to other if you do uh, do not actually back by do not spy upon others every single thing alhamdulillah we get guidance from quran and especially how if you talk about your our daily lives etiquette we do get guidance from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our daily manners daily life manners and etiquette how to greet alhamdulillah quran and rasulullah both of them get give us guidance how to greet people how to say assalamu alaikum how to reply how to you know uh, dress simple thing dress code alhamdulillah quran and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam does not leave us like that gives us guidance similarly if you want to get to know anything how to eat we have guidance for that how to drink we have guidance for that every single thing then how come such an important action you using restroom urinating how come islam can never ever leave us like that so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his beloved nabi prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam encourages to get a pure complete cleanliness inna allah yuhibbu at-tawwabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahhirin indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who makes tauba who make tauba and those who actually perform their cleanliness they always make sure that they are clean when they come for jumuah it's not like they are working in warehouse and they were completely full of sweat maybe sometimes smelly and now suddenly they start coming to the masjid no with that actually you are doing two wrong things rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has commanded uh, commanded us ihtisal yawm al jumuah di wajib ala kulli muhtalib sometimes it becomes wajib to perform ghusl on uh, on the day of jumuah when it is so when you know that actually i am making others uncomfortable i am actually not completely you know uh, uh, with ghusl i'm not you know in situation that if i sit with others i may be smelly or something it becomes obligatory upon us necessary upon us that we do ghusl and we go do not make other people uncomfortable do not that's why an nazafat al shatr al iman cleanliness is part of iman so we were talking about lack of precaution you know not protecting ourselves our clothes our body from the urine drops it can cause huge huge punishment on the day of judgment let me quote one hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says narration of sayyidina abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qaal marra rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala qabrain rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was passing through a graveyard and he saw two qabr fa qaal in ama ama innahuma la yu'adhibani wa ma yu'adhibani fi kabirin rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in these two graves i am seeing they are getting punished they are getting adab of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he says wa ma yu'adhibani bi kabirin and they are not getting punishment because of something very huge something very huge and with the tashrih inshallah I'll, i'll talk about the uh, you know elaboration about this let me finish the translation amma ahaduhuma fa kana yamshi bin namima the first one he used to snitch people he used to talk bad about you know people behind their back and wa ala wa amma al-akhir fa kana la yastatiru min bawlihi and the second one he was not very curious he never used to take care of his drops of urine when he were, whenever he used to uh, go to the bathroom 
قال فدعا بعسيب رطب فشقه باثنين ثم غرس على هذا واحد وعلى هذا واحد ثم قال لعله ان يخفف عنهما ما لم يبسا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم took two plant you know two plant and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam plant one on one grave and another on another grave and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says as long as these two trunk uh, you know plants will be wet inshallah rahman allah will grant both of them ease in their qabr may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand with this there are plenty of plenty of things that we have to understand what is the first one that we have to understand that adab al qabr it is very important thing and it is there some people think that we will die from here and we will get up on the day of judgment in the middle there's nothing no adab al qabr is there that's why it is recommended to make dua wa qina adab al qabr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you uh, protect us from the adab al qabr it is there it is there second thing that we do get that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says amma yu'adhibani bi kabirin they were not be punished they were not punished because of something major no it was major but rasulullah meant it is not major in the sight of people Sometimes you think it's very easy. Sometimes you think it's so light. Sometimes you think it's nothing. But only Allah knows that can be huge in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you an example with actually completely other way around. Other way around. Narish in Bukhari, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to motivate people, encourage people with the stories. So Rasulullah mentioned a story about a uh, prostitute. And when he, I say prostitute, you already know she must be completely, you know, sinner. And she was passing by a well. And she saw there is a dog, a thirsty dog. And could not reach to the bottom of the well to get water. What she did, she took off her shoes. She actually made sure that she get some water for the dog. And she fed the dog. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave her because of her kind action. Allah forgave Now what do we understand? Sometimes you do think it's so short. That this act is very small. But you don't know how great that action could be in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That goes for both sides. Sometimes we do commit sin. And we think it's nothing. It's a it's minor act. But you don't know. Maybe that can give us Jahannam. Sometimes we do do some good deed and we do small thing. We don't know. Inshallah, Rahman, we may get Jannah because of that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the faith to understand this. So this is something we understood. That uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he saw, he says it's lighter thing amongst the society. And these days, it actually, uh, the, you know, history is repeating itself. We also think our youngsters, when they go and use restroom, they think it's nothing. They actually stand up and they actually, you know, put their clothes down and they start peeing. And they think it's absolutely fine. No. All the parents I'm seeing right now, it is our duty that we make them understand. Each and everything has some kind of, you know, uh, way, method. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has already taught us. Whenever we do have to use restroom, we have to make sure that we do sit down and we do it properly. So the urine drops should not come on our body, should not come on our clothes. I totally understand. Sometimes in the public rest, uh, restrooms, it is very, very hard to do sit, to sit down and do it because the entire toilet seat is absolutely dirty, you know. It's absolutely dirty, you know, people, those who came earlier. So in that case, what do we have to do? I totally get it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Whatever the way we can, the best way, plenty of ways you will find out, you know. We do find the solution. We are this season, we always have jugaad. So what we can do, we can put, you know, some uh, dry napkins, you know, by the toilet seat. And then, you know, make sure that uh, nothing is remaining. And then we sit on it. Whatever kind of jugaad you can find out, do that. But make sure that you do not, you know, do not... Uh, impure your clothes or your body because that is the main thing that we have to have you know we have to make sure when we start our salah what do we uh, few things we do see clothes place and body is completely pure if any of these things is not clean our salah will be accepted no so we have to make sure 
We have to make sure. And look what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. These people, one of them is getting punishment, adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of what? He was not very precautious. He was not very keen to make sure that his clothes and his feet, his body is actually not getting, uh, you know, urine drops. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq that we do so. We do take care of it. Let me quote some more hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. Rasulullah says anyone who does not protect himself from the urine drops, his salah is not accepted. His salah is not accepted. So my brothers, and I'm, uh, I have uh, sisters too. So my brothers and sisters, we have to make sure. As I said, the parents I'm seeing over here, they are immigrant. They are already, alhamdulillah, good in that. They do take care of it. But the kids, they are born and raised over here, they do not take care of it. So this is our duty that we teach them. Look, it may take a couple of minutes extra. Actually, in fitrat, in nature, human being is lazy. Insan is lazy. And especially people in America, they are much lazier than, you know, desis. Why? Because... The day they were born, they are getting luxurious life. They did not walk, you know, like when we were young, you know. One mile, two mile is nothing. And, you know, our parents used to go, you know, sometimes barefoot, go get this from the shop. But kids, those who are born and uh, raised over here, they think car is the basic. It's part of our life. They are like, um, sorry, do not get offended, but are, they are lazier than, you know, any other, uh, uh, you know, nationalities. Because they have luxurious life. They can never, you know, they don't sit on the chair. They need sofa all the time, you know. They need bed. So that's why they think who will go in the toilet, clean it properly, you know, put the pants down, then wash it properly, then put, you know, again, you know, use the water, and then, you know, get up. It's four, five minutes process. That's why what do we have to do? Just stand up, take the thing out, do it, and go out. That's it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect. That's one minute laziness can cause us hundred of years of punishment, adab. It can give us adab for, you know, very, very long period. So what do we have to do? You have to choose what you are going to do. Either you do learn, you use restroom properly, or protect yourself from Jahannam. Or you just want to be a little much, you know, more lazier, save some time, and I know what you are going to do outside. Play game. That is also wasting of our time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq that we do understand. Amen. One narration. It's a little big, but I want all of you to pay attention. Because in this narration, we have plenty of more, some extra things to learn. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hafiz ibn Naim has mentioned, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, four type of people, four type of people, they will hurt and they will harm Jahannami people in Jahannam. They will hurt Jahannami people in Jahannam. It means they will be so mischievous. Their punishment, their azab will be so hard that other people of Jahannam, they will get fed up of them. They will think, who are they? We are already in trouble. We are already in hellfire. We are already in Jahannam. We are getting azab and punishment. And who are these people? They are actually giving us more trouble. Because of them, maybe the heat is getting much hotter or something. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Jahannam people, they will ask each other. And they will say, who are these people? And why we are getting more punishment because of them? And who are they? What kind of punishment they are getting? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues. And he says, the first one, uh, he will be completely, you know, uh, he will be locked in a case. Case made of, uh, uh, made of, you know, fire and iron. Completely. The, another person, he will be eating his own parts of the body. He will be eating his own parts of the body and his punishment will be exceeded every single day. The third one, the blood and the pus will be coming out of his mouth every single time. Every single moment. And it will be increasing the smell do you know the bad smell into Jahannam? And the last person, he will be cutting himself into pieces. And those pieces he will be, you know, chewing. 
those Jahannami people, the other people, they will be asking who are they and why they are getting such a huge punishment. And because of them, those who are going closer to them, he is also, you know, feeling that. Why it's happening? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he replies, the first one, the one who actually, uh, who's completely locked in the safe of fire and iron, he is the person who was not very curious about his urine drop while using restroom. Look at the punishment we are expecting on the day of judgment. And I believe nobody wants that. Nobody. So what do we have to do? We have to make sure. We have to make sure that we do it properly, inshaAllah Rahman. The second person who actually he was away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah's, Allah's mercy. And why he was actually getting this uh, punishment that he was eating his own, you know, uh, flesh. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says he was doing, he was snitching people, talking bad. Oh, this brother, he told me about, you know, some, when it's true, it's snitch. When it is wrong, it's riba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq that we never do that. This is the bunyat. This is the root. To have a beautiful, joyful society and community. When we do not talk bad about others. When we always praise each other. When we always encourage one another. When we always do good about each other. When we do something wrong with polite action. With its kindness. We let others know, brother, this is not the right way. That's how we actually build a beautiful society. What do we do? With actually, whenever three sitting, they are talking about the fourth one. When four people sitting, we are talking about the fifth one, the one who's not there. This is what we do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَيُّهِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُ The third person who's getting punishment, that is blood and pus is regularly, continuously coming out of his mouth. This is the person who used to consume haram. Who used to consume haram in this uh, dunya. That can be anything. Interest is haram. Uh, animal which is not slaughtered uh, properly, that is haram. Uh, alcohol is haram. And many other things which consumes alcohol, that is haram. Or earning in the way of haram, that is anything which is even halal. If your earning is not halal, it makes all other things haram too. So if we do consume, we have to be aware of this, that there is a huge punishment is waiting for all of us. And the last person who used to cutting his flesh, and then he used to eat. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was doing ghibah in this dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq that we do take care of ourselves. We protect ourselves, our tongue, our, uh, you know, our a'mal, our actions, our sayings. From all kind of major sin which can lead uh, towards Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. So brothers and sisters, at the end I'd like to summarize the entire thing. Keep in mind these two hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, The major adab, major adab of the Jahannam can be one very small thing. And that is the urine drops when we do not take care of that. So I would request all of the youngsters and youth, just take a couple of extra minutes. Just take, just have some extra precaution and use your restroom properly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq that we do take care of it, inshaAllah. And we become clean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are pure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who make tawbah. Jazakallahu khair. I have a couple of announcements, inshaAllah rahman, I'll talk about this. But before that, let's, uh, you know, conclude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of the youngsters and everyone the tawfiq that we do use restroom properly, inshaAllah. We get uh, nazafat, purification, completely cleanliness. We make sure that our body, our clothes, and every single this is pure. Jazakallahu khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa